Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Now let's talk about Raw. Because here's another one. I don't think this show is better at two hours. I like that it's two hours. I don't want to watch a three-hour show. But I watched this show, and by the time it was over, I realized they got a lot of work to do to figure out how to make a two-hour Raw. Because the thing that nobody talked about when we were discussing Raw moving to two hours, all we talked about was how great it was and how the rating is going to be up because they're getting rid of the low-rated third hour. But what we didn't talk about is that every year when they do that draft, they draft two to one to Raw. So the Raw roster is significantly larger than the SmackDown roster. And so SmackDown has no problem doing a two-hour show. They got a limited roster. But now all of a sudden, you've got a Raw show with one-third more talent. And in order to get all of your stuff on the show and make sure you've got certain people and et cetera, they had to rush all sorts of stuff. We had a five-minute Intercontinental title match. There has not been a five-minute main title match on a WWE program since the heyday of Vince losing his mind. 2018, 2019. I mean, I just watched it and I mean, it was fine. I was glad it was two hours, but the, the three hour show was a better show in terms of utilizing talent and giving people time to do their matches. So we'll see what happens next week. But, um, this was very clearly an extremely rushed show. I'm giving them a week of grace because it was absolutely way too much packed into that tight a window anymore of two hours long. But, you know, they had to have a women's match on the show, I guess. That's why the 10-woman tag was on there. That didn't need to be on there. You could have saved some time that way and extended some time to the Intercontinental title match. But okay, I get that. But then again, if you're going to have that 10-woman women's match, maybe you could have cut back on some of the other pre-tapes and stupid segments that you had. They had to hype NXT, so you got a goofy Adam Page, Ava, and sexy Red segment. So again, I'll give them a week to kind of work out the you know nuts and bolts of that. Although, frankly... You know, that should have been something that should have been tighter, but we'll see what happens next week. But if you're going to have, it looks like it's going to be a nothing more than a four match show every time out because there is so many, there's so much when it comes to interviews and backstage packages and vignettes that they're going to want to air that four looks like that's going to be it. You know, sometimes I see her and I talk and it's like, nobody's listening. Lucha Gatto here says, somehow it's the same people making SmackDown that forget how to do a two-hour show. I'm not going to repeat the entire thing again, but did you not listen to a word I said? They have one-third more talent that they need to now squeeze into a two-hour show. That's a problem. In fact, in fact, this is also one of the things about Dynamite. Look at the Dynamite roster. That roster is gigantic. So, when you're doing a two-hour show every week, that's why you don't tune in every week and know who's going to be on the show. Because every single week it's going to be different. Okay? SmackDown could literally advertise nothing. Nothing. And I could write down a list of people that I think I'm going to see on SmackDown, and I will see every single one of them. Okay? I could do the same thing on Raw when it was three hours. But now, when you've got X amount of talent and you've lost an hour on Raw, I can't do that. I don't know who's going to make Raw now. Because not everyone can make Raw because you had to cut an hour out. It's do the really same thing with that? Dynamite. <laughs> so the fact is, and somebody asked me today, they go, is, is this like, um, do you think that Dynamite and... Or AEW and WWE are held to a different standard in terms of things? And the answer is, well, yeah, they kind of are. Because the AEW audience expects something different from the WWE audience. The AEW audience wants great wrestling matches. Okay? That's what they want. I mean, I'm sure they want more. But, like, you, can, you need to advertise a bunch of great matches for people to watch the show. The WWE audience is not about great wrestling matches. They want to see the stars, and they want to see the storylines. 
And if you know on SmackDown that you are going to see certain stars without fail every week and certain storylines will be followed up on every show, you don't have to advertise everything. But it's different for Dynamite. Why are you laughing now? I just, I can imagine you at like 7.50 Pacific time with your, your notepad out going, I can't even figure out. It's only two hours. Who's going to be on here? I need to make my list. Bro, that's what they have to do. They have to do that now. Do Look, you realize they, that with what they had advertised, they were concerned that we must have women on this show? But there's an hour left, and so what they, they did was they took 10 women and put them together in a completely random 10-person tag. I don't know why it was booked. And it was like they just gave them seven minutes to do a match. Somebody pinned somebody that had nothing to do with anything, and that was their getting women on the show. That would not have happened with an extra hour because they would have had something for Pure Fusion Collective. And your favorite team, Caden and Katana. But they had to cut an hour out. So, well, throw 10 women in a tag. We'll get the women on TV somehow. Well, hopefully That's what they did. the next match that they throw out there with women, hopefully it's actually got some consequence to it and, and some focus to it. You can make the same case as to why did they really need then in that case to have Raquel and Liv and Dom pull up just to turn around and Dom make faces, get in the jeep and leave again why did they need carry and cross which you know that's why we used to have a velocity and a heat and other things like that for anything that's taking place with that whole situation so yeah they need to trim the fat out of that show and there's going to be some people who are upset that some of their favorite stuff is not featured or some of their favorite players are not featured but i have a feeling that drew mcintyre will be there you know, Seth Rollins will be there. Gunther will be there. There'll be enough people there where everything will probably sort itself out. And then everything can flip all back over again once we get to January. And they probably go back to three hours. <laughs> this guy goes, people would bury AEW hard if they booked a match like WWE did with the 10 women. Actually, no, they wouldn't because it happens every week. Yeah. Do I need to go back to Collision? And listen, it was my favorite match on the show. So this is not a burial, but I was watching Collision. And the next thing I know, we have got Nick Wayne versus Action Andretti versus Commander versus Hologram. Yes. Why? Well, we had four guys we had to get on the show, just like they had 10 women they had to get on the show. You got to give Hologram a Is w. the difference that it was men versus women? Because they were both exactly the same thing. We must get these four men on the show somehow. Well, let's make a random four-way. And away we go. Happens in both companies on all shows. Actually, it doesn't happen in both companies on all shows. But it happens on AEW regularly. Here is a random match involving people. And again, I'm not complaining because they're usually a lot of fun. True. Didn't we have like some wacky, bizarre 10-man tag on Collision like a week ago? I'm th pretty sure we did. It was just... Where was it? Yeah, we had Beast Mortos, Hologram, and Drillistico in a three-way. That was just something to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Cash Wheeler, Claudio, and Pac versus Private Party and Commander for the Trios titles. All right. Anyway, back in a moment. Observer Live. Sammy didn't win the title. Guess we were talking about that yesterday. He didn't win. He done got beat. So it is... Uh, Gunther versus Cody Rhodes, as well as Nia Jax versus Liv Morgan. Those are the matches for the WWE Crown Jewel Championship coming up on November 2nd. And then we got a lot of other matches that uh, are in the pipeline for everybody here, including uh, old Braun Breaker and Gunther. I think you're going to see that one coming sooner rather than later. And maybe Goldberg as well, if he can get his shoulder all fixed up CM Punk's out of action for a little while it looks like he's going to come back and feud with Seth Rollins at some point who I don't know people really like singing Seth's song and everything but he was kind of a real jerk last night kind of makes me wonder if maybe he's going to be turning heel at some point you didn't like that face he made to Jay when he came out he was a real jerk to Jay he was a real jerk to CM Punk fans booed him when he said he was going to retire Punk 
I don't know, man. I don't know. We shall see. But that was the uh, that was that. And Jey Uso beat Xavier Woods for the Intercontinental title in that uh, two minute match that we saw on television. Four minutes during the break. Two minutes of television time. And then Braun killed everybody. Breaker, that is. I literally thought I'd been abducted by aliens. I thought I'd had a missing time. It was the weirdest thing. I came back from commercial, right. and they went right to the finish after they had one minute before commercial. <laughs> I thought, like, I, I got abducted or I fell asleep. or I literally rewound to the beginning of the match to make sure I'd missed nothing, and I hadn't. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.